In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of using the string type in C++. So the first thing we'll do is include the string library. This is where the string type and associated functions are defined. Now, technically speaking, it might actually work without including this library. Some C++ development environments have been set up such you don't need to include it. But if you were to take your C++ program and try to use it in another environment, it might not actually work. So we should include this library. The first thing we'll do is create a string type variable. We'll say here string test1. And this creates a variable called test1 of type string. Now we can initialize the string with what's called a string literal. So we'll say test1 is equal to a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i. This sequence of characters between the double quotes is called a string literal. And what we're doing is assigning it to test1. And this is essentially what strings are, is sequences of characters. Basically, they're text. Once we've stored a string into the test1 string variable, we can output it. So we could say cout test1 endl. And if we save and run this program, we're going to get the text a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i as output there. So there's many operations and just things we can do to work with strings, to modify them and append them and all kinds of things. And what I'll do is go over some of the more essential ones that you typically see in C++ programs. And then we'll go over some of the more advanced particular ones in other videos. So one thing we can do is get the size of a string. So I could say here, C out size colon, and then we'll output test one dot size and L. So strings in C++ are a type of thing called an object and objects can have functions that are basically connected to them. And here we're calling a function size with this dot notation. We're saying test one dot size. And we can think of this size function as being sort of connected to this string variable here, test one. And all strings will have this function available. And what this will output is the size of the string in terms of the number of characters in the string. In this case, it should be nine because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we save and run this, we should get a size of nine output. And that is what we get. We can also modify and output individual characters in the string. So each character in the string has an index. So A here would be index zero, B would be index one, C would be index two, D would be index three, and so on. So if we wanted to output a particular character in the string, we could say C out, we'll say test one at zero, which should be A, and then we'll output test one at zero here. And if we run this, we should get test one at zero is A. If we change the index to one, then we'll get B. So we can actually access the individual characters in the string. Another way we can access the individual characters in the string is with the at function. So we could say C out, and we'll say here test one dot at three. And we could say test one dot at three, and that should be D. And this dot at function here is another way we can access individual characters in our string. So if I save and run this, then we should get that test one at three is D, and we do. We can also assign to individual positions, individual indexes in our string. So we could say here, test one, two is equal to C. And here what we're doing is assigning to index two in our string, capital C. Now index two is where lowercase c is stored now. So if we were to say C out, test one and L, we should find that the string looks a lot like before, but only now, instead of a lowercase c, we're gonna have a capital C. So if we run this here, we get that, A, B, capital C, and then the rest are lowercase. So we can also modify individual characters at a particular index in our string as well. One common string operation is to concatenate or append strings. So to take a string and basically add another string onto the end of it. So there's multiple ways of doing that in C++. So we could say here, test one is equal to test one 
and then we'll say plus J K L M N O P. And if we then output test one again, we're going to find that these characters have been concatenated on to the end of test one. So if we save and run this, we get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way now to element OP. We could also say test one plus equals, and we'll say Q, R, S, T, U. And this is another way of concatenating the string, in this case, Q, R, S, T, U, onto the end of test one. So if we save and run this, we now get the letters of the alphabet up to you now. One more way we could do an append or concatenation operation is to say test one dot append, and we'll say V, W, X, Y, Z. And one more time, we'll save and run this, and now we'll get all the letters of the alphabet there. Now, one of the way we can get the size of a string in terms of the number of characters is with the length function. So if I said C out and I said length colon here, and then we'll output test one dot length. So length will do exactly the same thing that size does. So we'll save and run this. And now we get a length of 26, which makes sense because that's how many letters there are in the alphabet there. So length is the exact same as size. They do the exact same thing. They're really just a synonym. And I actually kind of like that C++ gives you the option of using either length or size because some languages make you use one or the other and it's easy to forget which is which in which language. So we can also use the concatenation and append function with two string type variables. So I could say here string test two is equal to one, two, three. Then we'll make another string variable called test three. And then we'll say test three is equal to test one, concatenate test two. And if we output test three, this will successfully concatenate both test one and test two. So we could output test three here with an end L. And then we'll get the alphabet with one, two, three, concatenated onto the end. So that will work as well. We can also check to see if a string is empty using the empty function. So we could say here, if test three is empty, in other words, does it have no characters in it? Then output test three is empty and L. Otherwise, we're gonna output test three is not empty and L. And in this case, test three is definitely not empty. So if you run this, we should get that test three is not empty. And that is what we do get. We could actually empty the string by using clear. So we could say here, test three dot clear, and that will make the string empty. So if we did this exact same check again now, after we've cleared the string, test three will be empty now. And we'll output it just to see. So we'll say C out test three, and we'll output test three after using clear. And in this case here, we're gonna find that test three is now an empty string, and we should get that test three is empty. So we can see here, test three is now an empty string, and now test three is empty. So it is possible to convert from types like int and float to strings, and it's possible to convert strings to types like double and int and float as well. This video won't cover it fully, but just to give you an idea, here we could say string test four is equal to, and we'll say two underscore string, and we'll try negative 10. And then we'll output test four here. And we're gonna find that the string test four contains a string version of negative 10. So we can use two string to convert from things like an int to a string or say a double to a string. So if we said negative 10.5, this will also convert successfully to a string as well. It'll even work with things like Booleans too. If I said two string true, save it and run it, we'll get a one there, which is actually true in C++. 
we can also convert from a string to a type like double. So for example, if I said here double number is equal to, and I'll say STOD, and I'll say here test four. So test four, we'll change it back to negative 10.5 here. Test four is now gonna contain the string negative 10.5. STOD will take that string and convert it to a double type. And we're gonna store that into number. And then we can output the number here. And we'll find the number is negative 10.5. So I'll output the number with an endl there. And if we save and run this, we get number is negative 10.5. So this video won't go over all of them, but there is a series of functions we can use to convert from string to types like double, int, float, and so forth. So C++ actually has a fairly extensive library of functions for working with strings. And those things will be covered in other videos because there's just too much. But for example, one thing we can do is pull out a substring of a string. So a portion of a string. So here I could say string test five is equal to a test string. And I could actually pull out the word test. So here we could say string sub is equal to test five dot sub str two and four. So this function here, starting at index two, will pull out four characters as a substring. In other words, the characters for test. And if we then output sub, we're going to see that it contains the word test. So we'll run this here and we'll output sub. And if we save and run it, we should get test. And that's what we get. We get sub test. So there's a whole library of functions like this for working with strings in C++. But to cover all the variations on how these functions work, we'll really take other videos. So one more important thing we might want to do is accept string input from the user. And I'll show you how to do that. So here I'll say string name and I'll output enter name to prompt the user to enter a name. And then we'll use cn to store the name that's entered into name. And then I'll output the name that was entered. So I'll say output the name and then end out. And if I save and run this and I enter a name like Kevin here and hit enter, we get name Kevin and everything seems okay. But if I run it again and I enter the name, let's say Kevin space Brown and hit enter, we still get Kevin here. So when we use CN to accept string input, it's going to stop at the first space character or the first new line character. If we want to accept a string with spaces, we're going to use get line. So here we can say get line cn name. And this get line function will store the next line using cn into name. And it will stop at the first new line character. In other words, when the user hits enter. So if we save and run this, now I'll be able to enter in Kevin space Brown as a name and the entire string Kevin space Brown is stored into the name variable and we can output it here. And so while there's more we'll cover in future videos, this has been the basics of using strings in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.